Alrighty guys, welcome back to another Opera Omnia video where we're going to be talking about the next pair of BT Plus characters in the next episode of the Who Should You BT Plus, which is going to be none other than Gilgamesh and Kefka. Now, we're only going to be focusing on these two characters because I know that Guy and Rosa are going to be getting their C90s and whatnot, but... That will be for a separate video because in this video we're going to be talking about both of these two BT units and whether or not they are actually worth pulling for. Now we're going to go over what they are getting with their reworks and I actually made slides this time. Yes, I actually had some extra time to do it. So, uh, yay. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so we're going to talk about both of them. Of course, Kaiden, uh, he will be talking about the pros and cons about that. And then we're going to let you guys know who we are considering BT plusing at the end of the video. So, as always, if you guys do enjoy the video consider liking the video and subscribing for future opera omnia content make sure to check out kaiden's channel that link will be in the description of this video and of course do let us know who you are thinking about uh bt plusing between gilgamesh and kefka or if you're passing up for a future banner uh do let me know as well down in the comment section below but other than that let's go ahead and jump into it guys let's talk about these two bt units and who we are planning to bt plus <laughs> so we'll first start off with Kefka with his rework. So Kefka's rework to his skill 1 got an increase in Brave Potency. His plus version turns into a 3 hit AoE Magic Brave, plus an AoE HP attack 2 times that increases Brave by 30% of the HP damage dealt after the first HP attack. His skill 2 also got an increase in Brave Potency and the plus version now becomes a 4 hit Magic AoE Brave, plus an AoE HP attack 3 times. His, uh, with his C90, excuse me, his EX extension now turns his EX ability into a 5 hit Magic Brave plus an HP attack 4 times. His C65 extension got extended to 6 turns and adds a stolen Max Brave overflow up by 10% and a 40% Brave damage cap up. Now Ke Kefka now has access to his BT Plus and does the following. At 0 out of 3 it becomes an 8 hit AoE Magic Brave plus an AoE HP attack 2 times that can deal up to 29,997 in Brave damage and up to uh, 899,992 in total HP damage. At 1 out of 3 he gains an additional turn during Burst Phase. At 2 out of 3 he adds the following to his BT effect. So the party gets a 30% Stolen Max Brave Overflow up, a 20% Max Brave Cap Up, and whenever the party is attacking a debuffed enemy, all enemies Brave Damage Resist Down goes by 10% per debuff, up to a maximum of a 80% Brave Damage Resist Down. Now at 3 out of 3, you get access to an additional BT effect from Kefka. So now we get to the fun portion where Mr. Dancing Clown himself, Mr. Tactics, <laughs> He's going to be talking about the pros and cons <laughs> of Kefka. <laughs> What's up, man? Welcome I back. I, well, I, I'm happy to be back, but I thought I was a Kadash fan, not a uh, not a Kefka, not a uh, dancing clown. No, oh, oh, um, I mean, he, he, he's seen 90s coming up, so don't worry. It's okay. It, it's just for this episode. <laughs> sure, let me go put my clown makeup on. Give me one second. <laughs> let me go get my rainbow wig, too, while I'm at it. <laughs> 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 good to be back. Thank you for having me, and good to ha uh, good to be back with you guys again. Uh, today we're definitely going to be taking a look at Kefka's pros, cons, units he works well with, and units that he gets along with, and definitely talking about his BT effect for me. What I, looking at it from a global player and being very very happy with the minor tweaks that he's getting. Uh, I can definitely say for pros, uh, when I'm looking at Kefka, Kefka definitely has a large variety of debuffs in his kit. And on top of that, he has the ability to lock down a boss when it's about to use an HP attack that's mm -hmm. either aimed at a single player or multiple shooters. Mm -hmm. uh, I do appreciate the fact that Kefka has stopping capabilities. And on top of that, if you are looking at Kefka, uh, Kefka has a very, very hefty or fairly decent attack down. You're looking at a 70% attack down, a 30% defense down. And on top of that, you're looking at a fairly decent speed down as well. Um, all of his debuffs line up fairly decent when you actually put the... Uh, 
when you actually put his LD on and turn them from generic to frame, uh, his C65 adds a little bit more to him as well. Uh, I know that Lost pretty much covered a lot, <laughs> a lot ahead of time, but when it does come down to him, Kefka has a large variety of debuffs, and it only gets better with his BT effect. Mm -hmm. uh, with his BT effect active, you're definitely going to be able to see a large damage increase overall for your team. Not only just Brave, but HP damage and HP damage tap-ups, as long as the enemy is debuffed to health. Cannot stress this enough. Debuff your enemies with Kefka's in the party. <laughs> uh, believe in debuff supremacy in my own runs, and Kefka has the ability to help out or fill out debuff slots. Mm -hmm. um, I think more so when it does come down to it, and this is going towards his cons, Kefka has a lot of debuffs that just provide the attack down, defense down, and speed down. You can definitely roll with other units in the team who can definitely have speed down in their kits, that way you can really slow down the enemy units. Mm -hmm. But you don't really come across a lot of units, or you don't really come across a lot of enemies who are like just that insane speed type. Uh, you, you'll come across some, but you won't see a lot of them. Um, for me, when I think of Kefka, he takes up a lot of debuff slots. And if you're not running a team that has like a full eight, then Kefka slots in very easy. But if you have a team that have a lot of debuffs, uh, Kefka's going to take a couple of them. Uh, like a, a lot of them, actually, if I'm not mistaken. So when it does come down to it, you definitely have to think and be mindful of how you're planning your debuffs. Because mm -hmm. Kefka's going to take half. <laughs> uh, he's pretty much saying right right then and there I'm taking half um, so you have to plan around him and if you do plan around him please keep in mind that his most important ones for me when you look at it are going to be the blind and the HP disable because if an enemy is missing even mm -hmm. better for your team and if they can't HP attack you're even safer uh, he does have the ability to make runs safe but his own personal damage is going to be very questionable if you don't roll HP cap ups or help uh, find a way to help him increase his HP damage caps because even if he is hitting a, a debuff target a lot of his damage is going to be split damage so mm -hmm. if, if you're not capping that high or if you're not getting a lot of brave in between the hits you're going to be seeing lower numbers from him so definitely would think more than anything else giving him a unit that can battery him for his attacks and after his attack will help him out tremendously uh, he does get a couple of interesting things and moving back to his pros uh, he does get a lot of interesting things with this bt effect as mm -hmm. did from before i feel like when you're looking at if, like if you're actually going to be putting kefka in the team uh definitely definitely run him with units who can definitely help him out as far as like hitting those uh hitting those hp caps so that way a lot of his hits he doesn't hit a lot in between his brave or in between his brave into hp attacks so you definitely want to be able to bring a unit that can help him out with that or give him better uh, brave gains, or just being able to give him better all up uh, to be able to really, really help him hit those HP damage caps. Mm -hmm. um, that's definitely thinking more for pros. So if I could actually name a couple of units, uh, I will definitely say for sure right now, uh, the ones that are coming up and the ones that are out right now, Garnet, like Garnet hands down, easily makes anybody monstrous. <laughs> uh, putting those two together, very, very easy. Uh, however, uh, if you're looking at trying to increase his HP damage overall, and just trying to increase his damage overall, you can definitely stick him next to, like, you can definitely uh, find yourself sticking him next to anybody that can really, really do that. So I would definitely say, like, if you have any old green uh, BTs, like Yastola with the Brave Games, uh, putting him next to Kaitsith or having Kaitsith call on him would be very, very helpful to him. He's kind of speedy, but eh, you can you should be able to maintain it. Ursula is another unit that can help him out as well, just because of the fact that he has the 20% brave, uh, he has the 20% max brave cap, so that way he doesn't start from zero uh, mm -hmm. when he's able to do things. So there, there are multiple units who are able to help him, but as far as like his own personal damage, I feel like if you keep the enemy debuff and if you're definitely keeping them debuff, cannot stress this enough. Do not use his. <laughs> Please don't let his skills revert to the non-plus variants. <laughs> Other <Yeah>. than that, <laughs> um, when it does come down to Kefka, Kefka can actually do fairly decent damage when he's paired with the right teammates. And uh, the right teammates for him would be any unit that can increase HP damage and can increase HP damage caps. Because a lot of his hits are uh, split HP damage. That's where it kind of gets weird if you're using his main kit. Um, and this is going back to his cons. Um, a lot of a lot of his skills are split, and I wouldn't take him 
and I really wouldn't think of him as the main DPS. I would definitely think of him as a pseudo DPS, one that can fill in the slots and can drop fairly decent uh, hits on demand when you actually need him to. Mm -hmm. uh, again, it just kind of comes down to how you're going to be playing him and how you're going to be using him. Um, another con that I could think of with him, again, talking about his debuffs, his debuffs don't have HP damage built into it until you have his BT effect active, and if you do have his BT effect active, you'll see very, very good things with him, but uh, there isn't any base HP damage increase yeah. for the team mm -hmm. when his debuffs are on, so that's kind of the, the kicker there. Uh, because we are in C90 era now, a lot of units are able to be very self-sufficient when it comes down to their damage, and Kefka isn't bad as far as like his self-sufficiency, but it does get kind of bad if you don't have him hitting HP caps. Exactly. And you definitely, definitely want him to be able to hit HP caps. Uh, overall, I think with Kefka, as long as you run him in a team comp that can definitely provide him good, like good auras, or is able to increase his HP damage and increase his HP cap, he, he should be good to go as your debuffer. And he, I would definitely say this, let him be your only debuffer in the team. Because <laughs> <laughs> again, He's gonna take half your debuff slots. Cannot stress that. Yeah. Uh, your other your other debuff slots should be easily slotted in with like characters who take one debuff or like two debuffs or even debuff calls. Mm -hmm. Just don't pair him with Ferris. <laughs> you will have a horrible yeah, time. Yeah. No. Uh, don't mm -hmm. pair him with any other unit that that takes up other debuff slots because you'll be very surprised if you have like Caius and uh, if you have Caius and Kefka working together. For me, looking at those two sticking together, like that's your entire debuff bar. And if you don't have HP silence on, you're gonna have a bad time if you're not prepared for it. Like blind is not 100%, so mm -hmm. you have a chance at dodging at least. <laughs> but uh, de definitely, definitely keep in mind that he definitely works as the only. Like if you're gonna put him in the team, keep him in the team as the only debuffer. Uh, definitely can say more than anything else. But if he's your only debuff for your team, you should do well with him. So with Gilgamesh, Gilgamesh rework to his skill 1 reduces target's brave by 70%, then deals a 4 hit melee brave plus an HP attack 2 times that allows for more overflow. His skill 2 mad dance becomes a 3 hit melee brave plus an HP attack four times and extends his max brave up to four turns. When using Wild Dance, the only difference from Mad Dance is it has more brave potency and extends the max brave up to six turns. With a C90, his EX extension turns his EX ability into a four hit AOE melee brave plus, an a, plus a single target. HP attack three times that extends his big man on the bridge and real mensch buffs to six turns. It also delays all enemies by one turn. Now the real Mensch buff, and I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing that, uh, also got a small change that adds a 20% initial brave up and a 50%, oh excuse me, a brave regen by 50% of the initial brave. His C65 extension got extended to six turns and also adds a 40% attack up and a 40% brave damage cap up. His LD ability, I suppose I misjudged, is a 4 hit AoE melee brave plus an AoE HP attack 4 times that deals splits HP damage and increases brave by 20% of the HP damage dealt after each HP attack except for the last. He also grants the new Wanderer of the Rift buff for 9 turns that provides the following, a 40% brave damage up, 20% HP damage up, 20% attack up, and a 20% stolen max brave overflow up. Now with his LOD ability, you have a 25% chance to grant one of either of these characters LD ability at the start of turn. So you have a chance of either getting uh, Paladin Cecil, Ramza, Cloud, or Onionite. So basically you have a one of four chances of getting either of these uh, LD abilities that Gilgamesh will be able to use that replaces his HP attack plus command. Now with his BT, with his BT, his, so his BT is now a two hit AOE melee brave plus an AOE HP attack four times, then follows up with a final five hit AOE melee brave 
plus an AoE HP attack with a brave potency of 300% per hit and he does increase brave damage to a single target by 60% which also deals split HP damage to all targets. Now with his BT attack it's it's a little bit strange in a way because like his BT effect actually when it comes to his brave damage cap up and a max brave cap up increases every HP attack that he deals. So he deals 5 HP attacks in total on his BT at attack. So on the first one he is getting a 20% brave damage cap up and a 10% max brave cap up. And after each HP attack they increase. So uh, afterwards on his second it will be 40, then 60, 80 and then to hit it to, uh, to end it off it will be a 100% brave damage cap up. And he does increase, uh, it increases after each HP rotation, which I just mentioned. And then the same thing goes for the max, uh, max brave cap up. So it pretty much increases as he goes on about with his burst attack. Now his BT effect lasts for 12 turns, which I believe it is the longest BT effect that we have. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, so his BT effect provides the following to the party. So it is a stackable BT effect and to increase it, you basically have to let Gilgamesh act and that's pretty much it. So at one stack, he provides a 50% Brave Damage up, two stacks, 20% Stolen Max Brave Overflow up, three stacks, 20% HP Damage up, and at four stacks, a 20% Max Brave Cap up. Now, at one out of three, if you do decide that you want to BT plus Gilgamesh or throw uh, an Ingot or two, whatever it is you want to do, at 1 out of 3, you gain an additional turn during BT phase. At 2 out of 3, he adds the following to his BT effect. So at 1 stack, he adds 50% more Brave Damage up. In total, it's going to be a 100% Brave Damage up, which is real nice because he basically starts out with that uh, once you either use his BT uh, effect attacked or you actually go into the BT phase, the party pretty much has access to that 100% brave damage up, which is solid. And then at four stacks, he adds a 10% max brave cap up, totaling up to a 30%, which is really nice. And then finally at three out of three, he gets an additional use of his BT effect. All right, so now we got Gilgamesh on the t table, and I enjoy Gilgamesh. He's probably one of the most chaotic neutrals that I've <laughs> would have ever known him for. If, and he does have great music, like... too. Yes, uh, both of their musics, both Kepka and uh, Gilgamesh music, love them to death, but they will most likely get you a copyright claim just to avoid <laughs> that all time. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, going to... Speaking about uh, Gilgamesh, Gilgamesh is going to be getting uh, his LD and BT for global, and on top of that, fairly certain losses pretty much already covered everything that they have to know about him. But yes, sir. as far as like pros and cons for him, I would definitely say that Gilgamesh has a lot of utility built into his kit. At the exact same time, that is a con because you don't know what you're gonna get. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was going to say it's like a box of chocolates, but you really don't know what you're going to get when you get it. <laughs> uh, with, with Gilgamesh, I feel like with that thing, his pro, like Gilgamesh has healing, he has uh, he has team uh, team uh, term manipulation in this. Uh, he has the ability to launch, and then on top of that, he has, he has the ability to delay. So Gilgamesh has a lot going on, and that, again, this makes him chaotic neutral. <laughs> so he has a lot going on in that kid. However, uh, when it does come down to it, you, you really, really won't know what you're going to be getting into. It's actually his next turn. Yeah. Um, but all of them provide something, and all of them do something fairly decent for the team. Um, I would say more than anything else when it does come down to Gilgamesh, as a, and this is going towards his pros, if you have his BT effect active, his BT effect really does wonders for the team because of how long-winded his BT effect is. My god, 12 turns. <laughs> it's a long-winded BT effect. Then that's probably the longest but BT he... effect we have. I uh, yes, think. definitely, definitely. Uh, up to date. Well, again, I, I don't want to say anything. You know, Garnett. <laughs> Garnett is a thing, too, because after her BT effect expires, she gives you the exact same BT effect in the buff. So hers is kind of long-winded too, but yeah, either kinda. way. It's not exactly the same, but it, it, it's close to it. It's like one or two things missing, but it's still very good. Of course. Um, the only major difference I can think about when it does come down to it is that he definitely needs to get turns in order to ramp up his BT effect. So his BT effect is the exact same way as Bard's innocent. Uh, they, they both need to get turns in order to build it up. Mm -hmm. However, 
when it does come down to Gilgamesh, once his BT effect is at max, uh, once, it, once it is at max cap for its uh, effect, mm-hmm. you're going to get some good, like, very, very good stuff for it. And there isn't a restriction or, like, a requirement to keep it in place. Only thing he has to do is just really just get turned. Mm-hmm. And Gilgamesh does fairly decent damage on, like, on turn. Uh, if he actually presses EX, his EX is very, very heavy hitting. <laughs> uh, I, I would say that he can kind of sort of compete with other BTs that are out there, or other BT units that are out there as far mm-hmm. as, like, EX damage with his C90. But even still, that, that just kind of goes to show, if you <clears> put him <throat> in team comp, like, how you build him. Um, I think... Uh, one thing, and this is going back to his con, another thing that Gilgamesh probably suffers is the fact that he has a lot of brave hits, but he doesn't necessarily have the ability to, like, brave himself or, like, batter himself in between them, so there is that. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would definitely say putting a unit with him that can batter him in between HP dumps, like Ursula or uh, Iroha, or basically, uh, like, other units who can really, really help increase his damage output overall would be good. But hitting HP damage and hitting max HP damage is a different thing. You definitely definitely want him to hit HP damage caps when he's attacking, because he has a lot of exactly. HP dumps on that. Yes. <laughs> uh, so again, it, it kind of goes in the exact same field as Kafka in a sense, or like any DPS overall. Like you definitely definitely want them to be able to do hard hitting HP attacks, but you want them to be able to cap every single time to mm-hmm. try your best to. So definitely rolling him with DP. Uh, Rolling him with debuff calls that increase HP damage, basically your Kurosame calls, uh, your friend calls, your Orn calls, or like your Maria calls, your uh, <laughs> a lot of calls. Would recommend, <laughs> yeah, basically, a lot of calls, <laughs> or just have them in the party. Uh, having them in the party really, really works well too. Yeah. Um, Gilgamesh having a very long-winded BT, uh, you can definitely run him with other. You don't really need to run turn hoggers with him mm-hmm. because you definitely want Gilgamesh to get turned. You don't need to run turn hoggers with him, but anybody who can really benefit from him will definitely get a benefit a lot from him if you do get his BT. I feel like with Gilgamesh, though, and, and this is going towards his con, he isn't necessarily consistent. And I know that we talked about his, I know we talked about his uh, HP variant commands mm-hmm. beforehand, mm-hmm. but the HP variant commands they feel good to press. They're like they they do feel good to press. But again, you don't know what you're going to get, and it doesn't make him very plug-and-play friendly, if that makes sense. Because if you're looking at how he's rolling, or if you're looking at how he's uh, how he's starting off, and how uh, ideally how he's going to be played in the team, it, it's kind of you're, you're kind of thinking of how he can benefit the team, and he does benefit the team as long as the BT effect is active. But outside of that BT effect, you shouldn't uh, ideally you should not run through 24 turns. <laughs> of Gilgamesh back-to-back turns, but <laughs> um, I, but you definitely definitely want to be smart with how you use them. And if you can, uh, if you can delay an enemy, if like if you get the delay sword uh, from Cloud setup, it uh-huh. will definitely help you. But there's some enemies that counter that kind of counter him mm-hmm. because if the enemy can't be delayed, that sword becomes uh, that sword becomes kind of worthless in that sense. Because if an enemy can't be delayed, the only person who can delay an enemy or a delay immune enemy is Quistus. So mm-hmm. if, if 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 only that had that effect, <laughs> uh, then there's the drawback of some enemies can't be launched. You don't see it all the time, but some of his swords kind of sort of get nullified by the enemy. So that's the reason why I wanted to talk about that again, because there's some spots where he, he's able to use all four swords fine. Yeah. Um, but then there's other times where you, you will come across a boss that just cannot be launched or cannot be delayed. But you cannot ever argue with turn manipulation. <laughs> you can't ever argue with overheal. Like, overheal will always keep you like, comfy in a fight. Mm-hmm. If you're in a fight that has, like, a lot of HP attacks, if Gilgamesh is able to heal, if you get it, even better. But I, I wouldn't rely on it. <laughs> uh, it is 25% chance that you get a sword that it will most likely repeat. I'm not going to say really 25%, but there's a good chance that you're going to get the exact same sword on repeat. Yes. You have to be extremely careful with how you use them but uh overall when it does like when i think about gilgamesh and see him uh, coming from like as a global player looking at jp um he is very very fun for me <laughs> I, I i think because of how chaotic he is uh, very very <laughs> destructive very very weird and very very happy while being weird <laughs> uh, so I, I i definitely do enjoy him to that uh, but i would definitely say more than anything else just try your best to see if he fits your playstyle because a lot of people like some RNG to their kid. Like I, I know for me, 
uh, or just talking with other uh, talking with other content creators, talking with other people in the community. Uh, I've seen a lot of people enjoy the RNG random factor to them. Like it's skill gamash. Like you'll know what you're gonna get. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but I have seen other people who who've said the exact same opposite of. I don't like the uh, I don't like the RNG factor, or I don't like to consistently know what I'm gonna get. Um, Poor so Walker. There is that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Talking about Walker, but I mean Walker does Walker does amazing things at C90. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> uh, I like that we're doing this, but like right now, it's it, again. Uh, if we're gonna compare the two, it, they kind of have the both. No, they, they yeah. both have the exact same issue of. You don't really RNG. know what you're going to get until you get it. And mm -hmm. RNG can sometimes it's on your side. Sometimes it's a very cruel mistress that steps on you and tells you to pay it. <laughs> Pretty um, much. <laughs> RNG can be very, very mean. Uh, I have tried my best with Locke a couple of times just to get Genji Glove and it keeps giving me Miracle Shoes, man. <laughs> <laughs> but that's 50-50 versus... 25 out of like uh, out of four different swords is the 25 percent of you getting one of them yeah so, uh, no uh but I, ideally I, I really do enjoy uh, i really do think that gilgamesh is fun uh for how chaotic he is he he's definitely fun i is he like is he plugging and play for newer players that's debatable but he has his faces i i enjoy that <laughs> So we're going to finish the video off letting you guys know who we are thinking about BT plusing or if maybe we're going to skip for once. I don't know. Uh, who, who went for? I don't know who went first last time. Let, let, I'll let you, you. You you are the guest of honor. You go first. You know, for, for the record, last time you also let me go first. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> well, no, it's OK. I'll, I'll go first because I feel like I feel like being a guest of honor, you know. Thank you. <laughs> uh, OK, go ahead, Mr. Guest of Honor. <laughs> Uh, let's see. At this point, I'm your co-host. Um, <laughs> uh, let's see. He's a For bro. me, uh, I'm, I'm happy with being a bro. For me, <laughs> if I have to pick a green between the two of them, I would definitely go for Gilgamesh. Uh, just because of the fact that I feel like if I were to run Kafka, I would have to yeah. plan around his debuffs. And the thing about planning around debuffs, as a as a person who believes in debuff supremacy, I want to bring the debuffs that enable damage output. And defense down is a massive thing. It is, but if mm -hmm. you can keep debuffs on, Jack is very very like Jack is very very uh, sufficient. Yes, so Jack is uh, fifty percent defense down and a thirty percent brave damage increase. And as much as I appreciate Kefka as like an actual character, like that dude has given me nothing but bad laughs when I played the <laughs> original Dissidia, uh, when I played the original Dissidia game, mm -hmm. and even when I played Dissidia in T, he was good for a laugh every once in a while. Um, just looking at his debuffs, mm -hmm. if his debuffs were a little bit stronger or like more benefited, like uh, more benefit it toward the team when, if without his BT effect active, then I would be able to justify I'm not really going to say justify, but I would, I would definitely bring him more uh, for me okay. uh, just because like th there are just multiple ways around certain situations and I feel like if I did bring him, he would clog like he would clog up some debuff slots that I definitely, definitely would want yeah. to use for like my plans for later um, but with Gilgamesh, I don't have to worry about him bringing debuffs, and I can pretty much just plan around just the team's debuffs overall. Uh -huh. I, like, I, I guess in this case, I can definitely think of units who will definitely work well with Kefka. Because like, when, whenever I think of Kefka, I think of Pain right off the bat. Like putting Kane and uh, putting uh, sorry, putting Kefka and Pain next door to each other, uh, Pain is going to instantaneously get all of us like like pretty heavy like almost right off the bat ten pretty if much, she doesn't yeah. just outright get <laughs> if she doesn't just outright get it um she's, she's going to hit the red mark for 10 real quick when kept is in the party mm -hmm. um but there there's just more room for growth and the ceiling is a lot higher for gilgamesh if, you, if i can plan a team around him correctly and on top of that i enjoy long-winded bt effects and gilgamesh has that <laughs> mm -hmm. um the only major thing that I really I have to point out again is that Gilgamesh is oh, very geez. chaotic, very <laughs> chaotic, <laughs> and it, you don't know what you're gonna get until you actually get it, man. Like, like as much as I appreciate him, uh, Battle on Big Bridge is a good thing. Uh, <laughs> what is it? What is my favorite thing? 
but at the exact same time, I'm not trying to get copyright claims. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, um, and, and also, like, just for me personally, if, if I did bring Gilgamesh, I think that I would be able to adapt more to whatever he pulls out. Like, whatever sword he gets, I should be able to work with it. Okay. Um, just, Kefka's just really, really hard to work with. For me, he's just very, very hard to work around because of how many debuffs that he puts in. Yeah. Um, like, I, I know that a lot of people will say, well, what about Caius? Or, like, like you use Caius, and I have definitely used Caius a lot, but, like, Caius is four, and plus his his fourth is Doom, and on top of that, like, when his BT effect is active, like, mm -hmm. he breaks both targets. <laughs> and it's like, I, I can play a delay game with Caius versus playing an HP silence game. Mm-hmm. And it's like, if I'm if I'm doing an HP silence game, that to me is very very safeguarded, and I enjoy a good defensive route. But the way I've been playing, I don't really need that type of defense. So for me, I, I don't need that type of setup, or I don't need those type of debuffs. But for anybody else who are brand new to the game, and if you need a way to stop a boss from HP attacking you, I feel like Kefka is like a very very good pick. But um, for okay. me, I, I'm just gonna go roll with Gilgamesh. <laughs> Like, if I had to greet one of them, I, I'm going to pick you the <laughs> Okay. So, I know with me, when I did my part two pull planning BT video a couple of weeks ago, I mentioned that I was actually considering uh, BT Plus in Kefka just because, you know, something different. Uh, you know, I, I never really used them like that in the past. I was just like, you know, let's, let's just go with it. Now, it could be wrong because my memory is uh, goldfish memory as... That's kind of nice to tell me, um, <laughs> <laughs> but I, I I I wanted to try him out. But then you know, per the pre or per the conversation we had before we started recording, um, I I mentioned that I I really was considering actually not even BT plusing either of the two, and I'm still on the I'm still on that really like i'm on a bit of a fence now because we talked about gilgamesh and how i was saying that he has similar uh auras not not entirely but similar auras to to jack and i have jacked bt plus and um you know like one of the biggest things between both of them is that brave damage uh cap up not cap up uh damage up so the difference between Gilgamesh and Jack is that you Jack has to hit a broken target to get that 100% brave damage up. But with Gilgamesh, you know, he already, if you BT plus him, he immediately already has that and is providing that to the party. So it's like, okay, you made a point there. So I'm like, damn. <laughs> but, <laughs> but with what I have now and with some of the units that I got going on with, and especially because if I'm not mistaken, I believe Zach and Ramza are next afterwards. Um, I am probably not going to BT plus either of the two and just continue to save resources for uh, Zach's BT and, uh, and a greening Ramza because I do have his BT as well. Um, just because like I, I just don't see the need for any of these two characters and with my type of playstyle having that DPS support and like the third character, um, like I told you earlier, uh, like I, I honestly see, I, I see Gilgamesh as like that third character that if I had him BT plus, then I could take advantage of those uh, ores that he had or his BT effect um, that he will be providing to the party and the easy way of increasing him by just letting him max so uh, as of right now i'm probably gonna pass up on the two um I, I'll, I'll at least pull for his ld weapon uh just for you know shits and giggles but if somehow the game decides oh he's a bt for you then i'm then i don't know what i'm gonna do I, i'll probably I, I i may just let i may just let my viewers decide but we'll see <laughs> oh man viewer pool right off the bat green gilgamesh green <laughs> kefka <laughs> So, so to, to touch back on it, because I, I really want to make sure that, you know, we speak both the pros and cons of each one, because I know that we've talked about this already. Um, when, when I think about both of them, mm -hmm. BT effect wise, they both have very interesting BT effects. Yes. Where Kefka is definitely reliant on the enemy being debuffed, mm -hmm. where Gilgamesh just needs to get turns and ramp it up. Like, anybody who gets that ramp up is one thing, but they both have something that a lot of first units from the beginning don't have and exactly. that is going to be the hp cap up like hp cap up is 
a hell of a drug. And <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Garnet. <Like, if> <laughs> yes, thanks, Garnet. But I think it was a little bit before, like like it's Garnet and Machina kind of sort of. Yeah, that's right, yeah. <laughs> and it's just like, uh, like like Garnet just solidified her place in history now in the depot history, <laughs> and she's just forever there. Um, mm -hmm. It. And I, I don't want to take away from the two of them because I feel like both of them should be able to help out new players if they were to pick them up. Exactly. And if they're your favorite, yeah. like if they're your favorite, they can be like they can work. I've seen a lot of people, and it, and when I say this, I say this as you don't need to stick Garnet next to them <laughs> you need to make them work. Uh, or lock. Like, like you. <laughs> Or, or lock, but you do need to like you do need to build like correctly, and I think a lot of people now like the idea of being able to just win in five minutes versus winning in an hour and a half. And however you win, you win. Like I appreciate that. But God, who wins in an hour and a like, half? <laughs> I, I look, listen. Divine Shiva has told people has, oh, has oh, okay. shown me that Divine <laughs> Shiva like there are people who struggle with fights, and that's just one fight that people struggled with. Yeah, like, don't we, remind me. <laughs> like we we say that we're in garbage era, uh -huh. but for new people who just start the game, they are not in garbage era. Like they they are at the moment of like, oh wow, this is kind of WTF like, this is era. Plus. <laughs> yeah, because like. They don't have Garnet, and no. Garnet is gone, like, the base thing is gone now. So, like, you can still pick up her BT, and you can most likely pick up her LD, too, if they start directly, like, right now. Like, if they start, yeah. The, uh, anniversary. Uh -huh. But it, it's, like, if we have to go down the line, like, it's going to be harder for people to actually pick up. And, and then on top of that, we're going to get even stronger units. <laughs> And mm -hmm. I, I guess in this case, it, it, it kind of sort of depends on how fast you're trying to get into the end game. And I feel like nobody should rush to the end game. It is there. It'll be there forever. Uh, you, you, please don't rush into that. If you're not ready, don't walk into that fight unless you're ready. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> um, Transcendent 6 is very rude. It will tell you straight up uh, <laughs> that you don't belong here. <laughs> uh, but Kafka, if you do pick him up, he will be fantastic for Transcendent 6. Because debuff requirement <laughs> uh, for the second wave. Uh, but I, I definitely think more than anything else, these two have very interesting kits. Uh, if you can use them and if you can find a way to really, really max them or uh, find a way to max them out or bring the best out of them, even mm -hmm. better. I just think that for me, I think my winner would be Gilgamesh. And okay. this is just because of how I play. Um, but for anybody who's brand new or if they're your favorite, pick them up. They, they are fairly fun. <laughs> But Gilgamesh especially is fun. <laughs> but uh, that's just me, personally. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Well, let us know down in the comment section below what uh, you guys are going to be planning on doing with these two characters. If you are having any type of consideration for either of the two. Uh, whether it's just, you know, pulling their LDs or, you know, actually grabbing their BTs just to see for yourself, like, how... Uh, good of a, of a character they can be or you know what benefits they can actually provide to your already team comps that you may have uh, Let us know down in the comments section below uh, Kaiden, thanks again, man for coming back to another episode You're not a dancing clown no, no more <laughs> Oh, oh, I, I just go back to being the uh, the fixation target. That's fine <laughs> <laughs> Oh, now that I think about it like su super quick Kadaja and Kefka would not get along together cuz like and I say that because of the debuffs. <laughs> yo, yo, that's the reason why I'm like, not only that, but you'll copyright claim me right off the bat for just pressing your PC button. Oh, I'm good, bro. <laughs> like, and, and the crazy part is, I already have Kefka's BT, and Same. as much as I appreciate it, uh, and I got it on the free pool, this is. I'm not going to tell people my horror story on this video, but I'll, I'll sit here and say this. The free pool got me, and I have to go get the LD, and the LD was 300. Have fun. Oof. <laughs> Oof. 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 Indeed. <laughs> <Big oof. laughs> me, me and Kepka, he gets no love for but I, I, He's all right. He's good for a laugh, but he gets no love for me. He tricked me. He trapped <laughs> me into getting an LD, man. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but anyway, so, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like, subscribe. Do all that good stuff. Check out Kaiden's channel for non Kepka runs. And I'll catch ah. you guys. <laughs> <laughs> we'll catch you guys in the next video.